you're in for a treat. Five years ago, the Cisco Youth Leadership Award was established to recognize and lift up young people making significant impact in the world. This year's winner is just a perfect example of someone whose actions have both short-term and long-term impact. Take a look. My name is Kwasana Vutalien Kwasimasogo. I'm the founder of Science Learning. The aim of Science is to provide low-cost, practical, and hands-on STEM and robotics education to students in undeserved areas. My hopes for the kids that I'm teaching is that they become the next generation of people who are young innovators. I chose robotics so that I could make an iPhone or something more than an iPhone. I'm super thrilled by winning the Cisco Youth Leadership Award because this means that our learners in Zimbabwe will get to experience more advanced technological hands-on STEM education. Okay, how cool is that? So please give a warm welcome to our 2023 Cisco Youth Leadership Award winner, Kosana Butalenkosi Masuku. Okay, so I want to start with how you started. Um, you were a teacher. What brought you to teaching? Um, well, for me, um, teaching actually is something which happened by accident, really. Because, um, like, um, I'm an orphan, so I was staying with my grandmother, and um, just as I finished my high school, um, like, I realized, like, we couldn't afford for me to go to university. And um, at that time, um, like, the cheapest option really was going to uh, a teacher's college, and I was like, yeah, sure, um, let me do that. Then like, um, after I finish um, college, I can then do my degree because I'll be now working, right? Um, then everything really changed um, from the moment I finished um, uh, the course and I set uh, foot to the classrooms because now we are interacting with these beautiful kids. Um, we have a hunger and desire to learn and you're realizing that there's so many challenges uh, which they are facing. There are so much high dropout rates because um, I was trained as a physics and a chemistry teacher. So like those subjects were really hard for them. Like the dropout rates, um, which I found at the school were 7%. And um, you know, it, it really gave me a, a drive to say like, um, how can I help these children? Because like um, we're living in a world where STEM like is becoming something uh, very powerful. And um, that's how I found myself in teaching. And um, it's something which uh, has become a really big blessing for me. Wow, so did you say that the dropout rate was 70%? Is that right? Yes, yes, exactly. So, so tell us, I mean, you could focus on so much. Why do you think STEM is so important for your students? Um, STEM is like um, the biggest driver right now. Like, um, if you look at science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, um, it's driving the world right now. And um, we need uh, students who can be practical, not just um, learning STEM, but hands-on STEM education. So that's what that's what I always advocate on to say. Like, um, teaching STEM like is is happening. But um, we need students to be more practical on that. Because if we're raising students who are practical, then it allows them to be problem solvers and um, actually create uh, solutions to some of the biggest problems which are facing as a continent. Um, so like, and also STEM is not just about the subjects. Because um, students who actually learn those subjects, you know, uh, there's computational thinking, there's critical thinking, there's creativity. So all of those um, uh, perspectives are, in, uh, are brought to the child, which makes them a pretty clever person who can then elevate and be able to escape generational poverty um, through getting better jobs, through being able to be practical and create solutions to problems in their own communities. That's amazing, and you're Thank right. You. There's so much that can be done through technology. Um, for those of you that follow Kosana on social media, you will see that his students right now, 
They're going crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like I was actually telling uh, Rachel that I was trending in the morning, like uh, everyone back home is so excited. Uh, uh, parents are like, yeah, we're so excited. I'm putting my son there again. You know, like it's, it's really amazing. I love that. Why don't you give us some examples of the challenges that um, your work is addressing and um, how addressing them can really help create opportunities for young people more broadly? Um, so, like, um, what we've created um, at Science, we call it the ecosystem. So, because um, there are so many different challenges uh, that we realized. Like, when I first started teaching, I realized that um, there's no lab equipment. Like, students had no lab equipment. And so, like, everything was so theoretical and hard for them. So, what we did is we created an app, which is called Science App. Um, it's an augmented reality app which allows um, students to experience 3D models like because we realized that um, a lot of students, um, even in their families, there's always one person who has a smartphone. And um, through access to that, they're able to then study those 3D models because now if you're making something more visual and um, applicable to them, it's easy for them to really understand it. and. Uh, be done something which they see on a textbook because like um, now they can see the context, the true context of it. So the science app really helps students to actually learn uh, 3D models for science. It's like a pocket lab basically so that they can even when they are home they have their own lab which they can you know experience. Then um, the other challenge like uh, which we realized is that um, since there were no equipment, there is no practical education. So we created um, uh, the Science Maker Lab, which basically serves to uh, have STEM courses and robotics classes. Because like, if we look at um, right now developed countries, like even in China, uh, we are starting that they implemented their robotics curriculum for eight year olds back in 2003. And here we are, like um, in Africa, 20 years later, we still don't have that kind of curriculum uh, implemented even in the main curriculum. So we are like, let's address this problem and start developing that curriculum so that students are able to also experience this because we realize that if you give uh, the students the opportunities and all the resources, they can come up with so much um, solutions to some of the problems which you didn't uh, realize because we're always giving them some hackathons and you see them really bringing out their creativity which has been so much uh, nice to witness and so those maker labs are really serving like um, to bring that practical component and prepare them like for the future of work uh, basically and uh, another problem like which was really difficult was that uh, a lot of rural students they don't have exposure like if you get into a rural class right now and ask them like what do you want to be when you grow up you get typical answers a policeman a nurse a teacher because that is what they're exposed to they don't have like tv access um, they don't get to experience those careers and um, so we created stem clubs in schools, we partnered with schools to create STEM clubs so that we can bring a more awareness on all the, the opportunities which are available to students to say, yeah, there's also engineering. This is what happens. We show them the models, um, we make them build some prototypes, and then they like experience something like to say, yeah, of course, there's now like an access to this kind of opportunity. Um, like I always give an example to one of uh, one of my best students. Like um, she's actually about to graduate with a STEM degree right now, and she was like, it was because of uh, you say giving us this opportunity to. Um, see these careers because she, she used to work 10 kilometers to school every day. And now, like, um, it's one of my proudest projects. And yeah, so I think that's some of the challenges we're addressing. How inspiring is that? And through your leadership, you're unleashing the capability of these students, which is beautiful. So there's probably someone watching um, you right now who's thinking, gosh, that's amazing that he did that, but I don't know if, if I could do something like that what words of wisdom would you share? Um, there's one thing which I always tell like uh, young people, like the best thing is to just start. Like uh, when I started this, like um, I, I was staying at a rural school which had no electricity, which, has, which had no water, which had shaky internet access, like barely minimum. But I was like, um, let me just find a way. 
uh, so I'd commute to town and back, you know, to try and get also like the models which I was showing the students. So um, that decision to say, let me tackle this problem, I think was the biggest um, like uh, decision I've ever made. And of course, it's hard, like it's very hard at the beginning. But one thing that always pays out is consistency. Your consistency will always matter, and it will get you to the right places if you are true to the heart with the work which you want to do. Thank you. Kusana, I just want to say congratulations. And I think we're all so excited to see what you do next and how many people you impact. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You.